So something I didn't think about when creating my last Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospective was that in these early times of Yu-Gi-Oh!, we didn't have access to information like we do now. And I think it's something important to talk about, and also just a fun trip down memory lane, especially for you newer Yu-Gi-Oh! players who didn't play back in the day like I have since 2008. Shout out to Big Bruce 94 aka Derek Kingsley for bringing this up, because I didn't even think about this, and I think that this is important to know. Let's dive on in, shall we? So before we get into it, yes, I finally got my freaking tripod and now ah oh, we can be in beautiful 1080p 60 fps with our new york ultra ball ah oh, yes this is a good looking ultra ball it's a sexy ultra ball this is how we capture girls if you want to know how to get yourself a girlfriend or a boyfriend just throw this at them it uh has a pretty good catch rate from what i've heard so yeah there's your there's your ultra ball joke for you. I need to come up with a name for him. Maybe he'll be Bob, the girl catching ultra ball. Anyway, all jokes aside, I want to talk about something that not a lot of people talk about and even I haven't brought up in my Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospectives because it wasn't really something I even thought about just because it was something that we take for granted. So actually, believe it or not, TCG Player was not founded until 2006. And back in the day, the way that a lot of people got their information was actually through Shonen Jump magazines, more specifically the Yu-Gi-Oh! magazines that would come out, I guess, like every couple of months. And this was actually how, for a time, Konami would put out card prices that were out there in the market, I guess, on eBay and stuff, whatever it was. And they would also put out their ban list. And you're going to see a picture of one if I can find it, because I remember I had it for years and I may still have it. We may have to show that off in a video one day, but it was a Yu-Gi-Oh! magazine. It may have even been Shonen Jump, and it showed Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on the front. And in these magazines, you would have Yu-Gi-Oh! card prices. I think you would even have deck lists. I could be wrong. Um, you would have the latest forbidden and limited list if there was any changes. And it's really interesting to think back to a time when we didn't have access to all of these things. Um, one of the examples that... Uh, Derek mentioned in the comment section of my retrospective was that if he wanted to test a new tech in, you know, a deck of his, you know, he didn't just have EDO Pro or YGO Omega, Dueling Book, Dueling Nexus, what have you. We didn't have those things back then to just throw a card in your deck and play test against somebody. You know, from what I understand, and I didn't even know this back then, I actually heard this from Robbie Cole, you know, in one of his videos a long time ago, was that you had something called YVD, which was Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess, virtual dueling, where, you know, if you were playing back in 2004, then, you know, you would summon a monster, set a back row, end your turn, pass it back to your opponent, and then you'd go on about your day, you know, doing whatever and wait for your opponent to respond. It wasn't immediate, like say something like EDO Pro or what have you. Um, you know, back in 2004, we're talking Game Boy, we're talking not even the DS was out yet, like really, really nostalgic now, classic stuff that isn't even used anymore. Like I was even going back trying to play the Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. It was a 2004 Game Boy game. And the interface is just so badly aged. Like in newer Yu-Gi-Oh games, like the DS ones, you could change if you wanted to look at cards vertically or if you wanted to look at all of them horizontally, so you'd have a bunch of cards line by line by line. Um, but in the old Game Boy games, you didn't have that. So you'd have to go down through or organize them alphabetically by monster spells or traps. And it took a long time to build a deck. Now you can go on EDO Pro and build something in five minutes. And on top... Jesus, sorry, someone's texting me. Um, it's like just constantly dinging. Anyways, anyways, um, you know, you didn't have TCG Player to buy cards off of. You didn't have even YouTube until 2005. And even then, yu gi tubing really didn't take off until around 2008, 2009, at least when I got into it. Like I've had my channel since like 2009, 2010. I've been making videos since about 2009, 2010 or so. Um, but information was not as quick back then. Um, you know, on EDO Pro, you have access to the OCG balance. You have access to OCG cards. You know, if you want to play cards that were just revealed in Power of the Elements, you can go on EDO Pro and test those cards. People can learn very quickly 
how to adapt to new formats before they're even out yet. Look at the Outbaz structure deck. If this came out back in 2004 when information slowly circulated, much slower than it does today, then people wouldn't be able to prepare for the deck as well. It may even take more events. But now that we have this such digital of an age, now people can, you know, even print off proxies and goldfish the deck. They can go on EDO Pro or on Dueling Book, play test with their friends, learn the deck, you know, go into a solo mode and just hand play test combos. You didn't have that back then. Now you have a lot more ways to prepare for a tournament, whether it's at your local card shop, regional, YCS, nationals, what have you. You have all of these avenues. Back then, you didn't have that. You know, you didn't know the price of a card if you didn't have a smartphone on you. And even then, smartphones weren't really a thing to like, what, maybe 07, 08? I think the first iPhone was like 07 or 08 or something. I could be wrong. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make is that you had to rely on these magazines. You had to rely on almost to an extent, word of mouth, because, you know, the internet in its young days could not transfer information, you know, like it does today. You didn't have YouTube. You didn't have all these all these avenues of, of information and knowledge to pull from. Um, you know, if you wanted to know what the best deck was, you had to go ask people. You had to do research in magazines. You had to, I mean, you had to do things old school, which is really weird to think about because now it's like if you want to know what the best deck is you watch one of my videos not someone else's videos because we're trying to grow our channel <laughs> um you go on reddit you go on even pojo to an extent you go on even the dueling book forums like there's so many other things that you have now formats get solved like that now i mean even back then like i remember with edison format you know, at the beginning of Edison, people were just kind of playing whatever because no one knew what the best deck was. Shit, if something like Edison happened now, people would have the format figured out like that. You know, there wouldn't be none of this, oh, I'm going to play Glads. Oh, I'm going to play Quick Draw. Oh, I'm going to play Heroes with Gemini Spark. No, 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 no. You, you have that shit figured out months in advance. The moment a ban list comes out, I've seen in the past people like, oh, hey, look, this FTK works on the new ban list. And it's like, we're not even in the new format yet. And like, there's already a, an FTK, an OTK. We can already figure out what the best deck is. More tech ideas are coming around. Like, it's bananas how much of the game has changed in that regard. So any retrospectives that I do in the future, I'm, I'm going to try and keep that in my mind whenever I'm making retrospectives, especially if I do like 2002, 2003. I don't know if I'll go that far back. Um, but I'll keep in mind, like, look, priority was a thing. TCG player wasn't founded yet. You couldn't just go to TCG player and buy all the cards that you want or do a buyout of a card. Makes me wonder what the card prices were back then. I may have to go dig for my, my old book. In fact, you'll probably know better than me at this point because of post-production, Avery, whether I was able to find that book before I posted this video. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comments what you think. You know, how did you used to find out Yu-Gi-Oh! information back in the day? Um, you know, did you used to use the magazines? Did you use word of mouth? Like what were some of the ways that you got Yu-Gi-Oh information, I guess, before Yu-Gi-Oh really became mainstream? I'll tell you a quick story before I end the video, but I remember going to Dan's Sports Cards and Games and I was just getting into the game. It was actually my buddy Derek who called me up one day and said, hey man, listen, before you come out to Locals today, um, it's going to be Fun Deck Day. I'm like, what the hell is Fun Deck Day? And he says, Fun Deck Day is where people bring in fun decks. They're not necessarily meta. And, you know, you just, you have a good time and play with those fun decks. I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty cool. Well, then you get the one asshole in the room that shows up with Light Swarns. And then they say, oh, well, that's a fun deck, even though it's tier zero. So you always bring your backup meta deck just in case. But see, Facebook and all that wasn't really as big of a thing, at least in my neck of the woods, 2008, 2009. I was like, what, 13, 12, 14 years old? I don't know. Anyway, I just thought that'd be a fun story to tell. Guys, please let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to subscribe. Colossal Titan, smash that like button. Thank you so much for all the support. And I will see you in the next video.